So I recently had the pleasure of working with a mix engineer here in town named Dave Pensado. Uh, Dave is one of the biggest guys in the business. He's worked with people like Mary J. Blige, Beyonce, Christina Aguilera, um, Pink, Black Eyed Peas. The list just goes on and on. I mean, I can't even scratch the surface. So Dave is finalizing a mix on a song I did, and he asked me to come over to his studio this week and check it out. And when I was there, he asked me a funny question. That's what I want to talk about today. So here we go. Whenever I send my tracks out for a mix, I always send a final stereo file, something that I put some mastering on, uh, and that's pretty typical of anybody in the business. We send it out so it's kind of pumped up. So Dave had that track, and when I was sitting with him, he says, hey, how did you get your track so loud? And I had to laugh and I said, well, Dave, I learned it from you on one of your videos on Into the Lair. So I figured, well, if Dave liked it, maybe I should make a video on it. So that's what I'm doing today. What I do is a little bit of a modification on what Dave showed in his video. Something that I, over a period of about six months, I sort of fine-tuned to where I am today. Um, and so here we go. So as I was saying, the first place I went to when I needed some advice, some tips on how to really ramp up my mastering, I went to Into the Lair with Dave Pensado. Dave is one of the best, and he's not a mastering engineer, so let's be clear about that. He, uh, he's a mix engineer. He finishes his stuff and sends it off to somebody else that does the mastering normally, but we all like to put a little mastering on our tracks if we're sending it over to a client. I work with a lot of independent artists these days, and you know, there's just not a budget for mixers and masters most of the time. So I've had to really ramp up my skill level on the mastering, mixing side, because once something leaves my studio, it goes directly out to release. So let me show you what I do. All right, so the song I have up is the one that Dave is working on. It's going to be the single for an artist. It isn't out yet, so I'm not playing any of the vocal on this. I'm just going to show you a little bit of the music and show you uh, the, the, the plugins that I run on my, on my mix bus to master with. Big last chorus. So before I even get into the plugins, I want I want to show you my levels. If you look over in the right side of my screen at this meter chorus. Okay, you'll see they're getting up here right around 7-7 seven, seven RMS. So if I can get my levels up there around eight or a little above, I find that my mixes are volume-wise, they're competitive with what's going on out there in the industry, what's being released by the majors. So why is that important? This has been a big topic for, for years and years, the loudness wars, trying to get the, the, the volumes higher and higher. Uh, you know, a lot of guys hate that. And I don't blame them because there is a sacrifice to dynamics when you're fighting for volume. But it's not even worth getting in the debate about that anymore. Uh, the old days, they're gone. We are in a place where we must get our mixes up to a certain volume. They need to compete on radio. They need to compete if you're sending your tracks over to an A&R person and you're trying to get yourself signed to a record deal. All of these things matter. You want things to have as much impact as they, as they can when people listen to them. What you don't want to do when you're fighting to get those levels is you don't want to start crushing elements of your mix so that you, for instance, lose your transient on your kick and your snare or just really great moments that are being squished down by the you know a heavy limiter or compressor you want your mix to still feel very alive feel like these dynamic moments are happening so before we look at the plugins I want to look at the signal coming into the mix bus so you can see what my levels are so when I'm getting ready to print when I'm getting ready to put my mastering on there I like to make sure that my levels coming into my mix bus are somewhere between minus 3.5 and minus 2.5 dB. Uh, I didn't understand that for several years. I didn't really understand the importance of making sure that your levels were pretty low. Make sure that you have plenty of headroom in your, uh, at your mix bus. I found that to be vital to getting the most out of your plugins, to get the most out of your mastering. So again, coming in right around 2.5, 3.5, somewhere in there.
make sure your mix bus has definitely got plenty of headroom in it coming in. Now I'm going to show you Ozone right quick and then we'll get into my settings. So you'll see that it's got an equalizer, dynamics, an exciter, an imager. After working with it for a while and getting mixed results, I have come back down to using it primarily for the maximizer. I do put some imaging on it as well, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. So this is what my plugins look like on my mastering. All right, so let me show you what I'm doing. The first plugin in my chain is an EQ. The name of this EQ is Frequency. It's native to Cubase. And it's a great plugin, but there are numerous plugins that do this. There's Fab Filter, there's Waves plugins that are great for this. First thing I do with my EQ is I roll out some of the low end. I'm rolling out at about 53 hertz. So I'm getting rid of some of that sub material down here. I'm also leaving a little bit of a peak here. It runs at about 2.4 dB. So there's a little bit of bump and it really kind of peaks out right there about 65 hertz. So that helps give me a little bit extra punch down there in the sub area while rolling off a lot of that material below it. All right, the next thing I do is I run through this Shadow Hills compressor. If you take a look at it, you'll see that my discrete ratio is pretty low. It's as low as it'll go. I have a very slow attack on this. The recover, which is the release time, uh, very fast release. So slow attack, fast release. My threshold is set about 10 here. Up here in the optical section, you'll see that my threshold is just over 10, about 11. And then I, my gain is set just below 10, just right around 10. A lot of guys really love the steel transformer. I kind of like the iron one. I do like the side chain in. So that's the way I like to have it set up. So here's with the shadow hills in and out. As far as my gains on my Shadow Hills, I really am not trying to boost the gain a lot from the compressor. I'm, I'm just trying to really sort of match the volume that it was coming into the uh, Shadow Hills. All right, so let's take a look at this one. Right now I'm running the Imager and just the Maximizer on the Ozone 7. Check it out. Huge amount of volume. Again, if we look at my meters over here, what's happening? Watch them as they shift up. Once it finds the RMS, you'll see it's popping up there right around eight. Uh, the imager, I'll show you the settings on this, just to give a little width here and there to the, to the mix. I really like this IRC3 setting. It's a little bit more aggressive. Uh, you can even go more aggressive, like crisp and clipping. It seems to allow my kick to punch a little bit better. Uh, I run the threshold right around minus 8.6. That's sort of my default setting when I first open this up. If I hit minus 8.6 and my RMS levels are way, way above uh, 7, I'll actually pull it back. I won't, I don't want to go quite that loud. I really want to make sure that my percussive parts are really, I can feel the transients, I can feel the pump. On my character setting here, I have it pretty close to fast. There's no stereo link in here going on. I don't use the dither on it. You know, dither actually introduces a slight bit of noise in your mix, and I found this dither was particularly noisy. So instead of using the dithering there, I pull up the Apogee UV22. I just found that the Apogee was a little bit less noisy, gave me the same results, which is dithering down to 16-bit when I'm running a final uh, master. Again, one last time with everything. All right, you guys, I hope you found this worthwhile. Uh, if you did, of course, please like and subscribe. I do want to give one more final shout out to Dave Pensado. What a talent. So there you go. Hope you guys have a great week and until next time. <laughs>